What's going on everyone? This video, I'm going to be showing you guys a couple of follow-ups to the Kali flow. It's one of the staple moves in Anastasio Kali and it's pretty much the gateway to all of your other techniques. So these are just going to be a few and we're going to specifically look at targeting the arm and we're going to look for submissions. Generally speaking, because this is a combination of striking with your weapon, without the weapon, depending on the format in which you're applying it, a lot of the endpoints will end in a position where you're uh, uh, able to draw a weapon or you're able to strike. And that's kind of the, the predominant nature of Kali for the most part, but you also want to make it a little bit more accessible and you also want to get into a controlling position where you can negotiate, de-escalate, and not have to resort to striking all the time. Um, so what we're going to look for is there's, there's two ways you can get into the Kali flow. One is a very compliant way. We're not going to kind of go over the situations on how you get here in the first place, but it's kind of two variations. So basically, again, the Kali flow is a series of movements where I end up with an underhook on a striking arm and an overhook framing against the neck or to the shoulder here. In some cases, this can be a little higher up on the neck, and this is going to be kind of a more controlling Kali flow setup here. Okay, so if I turn that around just so you get an idea. If it's on my neck, I'm going to be squeezing it in between my neck and my shoulder, keeping that nice and tight. And I also want to hook my arm around nice and tight over the elbow. And I want to be able to press it down and gable grip my hands here to keep a nice strong connection here. Once I have that, I can switch off to grab fabric, grab my shoulder, and then I can use my right hand to frame against the neck. And generally, this is where, uh, where we throw in the knee and we're able to do the rest of our techniques. In the other sense, if this is a little lower, I have it clamped on the inside of my elbow around the wrist area. I have the back of my hand on the top of the elbow, making sure that this stays extended, and then I can frame against the neck here. That's where I throw on my knee, and then I expose this line for the arm. So regardless of which one you get to, you can pretty much use that to access these next series of techniques. If you want to learn more about that Kali flow and see how we get to it or how the initial process is done, there's a video that I posted not too long ago called How to Apply the Kali Flow. So definitely check that out to give you a little bit more insight to this. But when we're working from this position, the first technique is going to be a very simple one. I like doing it from up here. It has much more control. But again, you can also do it from the lower part. So I'll show you both. This is what we call the full arm bar. It's a very common move. Um, and a lot of these techniques will transition from Filipino martial arts and also with a little bit of Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Um, so anyways, I have it here locked in, squeezing nice and tight. I have my arm compressing over top with my gable grip here. And all I basically want to do is squeeze to keep the connection near my neck. And then I want to squeeze my hands and pull this down to create tension and almost like a hyperextension on the back of the elbow here like this. And that pressure here should be enough to either rotate the arm, which can lead to a kind of a submission flow, or get the submissive position as well as the submission itself. Okay. Um, at this point in time, when I'm holding this, I can always let go and I can, again, draw, frame, strike, and do all, kind, all kinds of different follow-ups if this is not enough for this specific situation. Okay. I'm going to come to the other side so show, I can show you the lower version. So in a more compliant Kali flow, once I've got into the submissive position here and I've isolated this arm, I'm going to keep this clamp up top. I'm going to keep this hand on top of the elbow. It's very important I keep my elbow up as well, so I create this diagonal line here. I can take my right arm and I can go on top of the shoulder. It's not absolutely necessary, but I can double up here, squeezing my elbow, and then I can start pressing down with my hands. And if their pain threshold is a little too high, I can always lower my base, maintaining this kind of diagonal line to create the pressure here. Okay? So the full arm bar is kind of the go-to because it's automatically present when you go to do the Kali flow, whether to apply it to a takedown or apply it to submission or apply it to strikes. So you don't really need to work too much in that sense. So when we look at, at another submission now, so if we go from that same position where this is on top, and I set up the same way and I ended up with the full arm bar, but I wanted to go a different route, we can look to what we call a half arm bar or in some cases a Kimura. So my half arm bar is gonna be attacking from shoulder down to the elbow. My full arm bar attacks from shoulder down to the wrist, depending on what I'm pressing and what I'm tweaking. So when I get to this position here, I'm going to advance, so I'm gonna slide a little closer. And when I do that, I'm going to take my right hand and I'm gonna peel it off my neck and my shoulder. And I wanna get a grip on the outside of the wrist here. When I advance, I'm gonna push it 
and my left hand is gonna press down into the shoulder here so I can cause the elbow to bend and it's gonna wrap around to the back of the body. Once I get that, you can have four hands, five, sorry, four fingers, five fingers. I prefer four fingers. My left hand that's currently hooked inside, I'm gonna grab my own wrist. I can press down with my right elbow and when I do that, I'm gonna paint the back of his, paint the back of his back and I'm gonna lift this up and keep this nice and tight and get the tap here. And once I get that, I can maintain this position and more of the half armbar concept is not necessarily the Kimura, but keeping this shoulder controlled, pressing down and controlling their base here. Okay. So if we look at that one more time, this time if we do it from kind of more of a compliant Kali flow, this is a lot easier to get to the half armbar because my hand is able to manipulate this elbow much easier and I can just basically turn and I can set up that Kimura or that half armbar. So when I'm in this position here, I just have to twist my body without moving my hands. I can slide my hand up a little higher if I want to, to get into the shoulder control, or I can slide it up, reach over with my right hand, grab the wrist, grab my own wrist, and then I'm in the same position for the Kimura. Okay, so we have the, the full arm bar, the half arm bar, and then we have what we call the inverted arm bar, or in some cases, the Americana. So a lot of these techniques are based off of manipulating the shoulder uh, rotator cuff and making it get into an awkward position where it can't rotate anymore. So if we look from that higher position one more time here, again, setting up with the full arm bar because it's already there for me. This time what I'm going to do is I'm going to peel it back, but I'm going to peel it back with my left hand as opposed to my right hand. So when I peel it back, I'm not going to attack the wrist. I'm going to attack the elbow here. And when I do that, I'm maintaining the squeeze here just enough that I can cause this to bend. So I'm going to dig my fingers into his elbow crease here, and I'm gonna make that bend. I don't need it to bend all the way, I just need to break this position here and expose the inside of the elbow as opposed to the outside of the elbow. Once I get that, I have my right hand, I can shield on my way in, or I can go right on top, and I'm gonna do what we call a butt sock, or a drop. So I'm gonna push my elbow down using my body weight, and I create that collapse I'm going to rotate my arm around, up towards your chest, and then I'm going to rotate it up using my elbow. So this is very, very, very painful. I can use this all the way to a takedown, or I can hold it in this position. I can take his back from here. There's a lot of things I can do, okay? So, if we look at that again, okay? From the top position here, I'm coming back, and I'm keeping nice and tight connection and I'm peeling with my left hand here. I turn and I drop. Now, if you do this too tightly, you're gonna to have to give a little bit in order to make this work very smoothly. If I don't let this slide a little bit, from this being up here, I don't have enough room to move. So it's very important you let this drop down to your chest here, okay? And as I bring this up, I can lock it in, okay? There's a couple of variations to that, especially if one, it's a little bit more difficult if your partner is a little bigger than you, if their arms are thicker, um, and they lack that rotation or they lack that flexibility to help you get to that position. Uh, so one of the ways you can look at that, and in this time we'll look at it in a more compliant Kali flow here, okay? Kind of the same concept, I'm gonna roll it, but I'm also gonna use my right hand or my right elbow. I'm gonna use it to, to push, okay? And once I start getting this push here, I'm gonna set the line and I realize that my hand can't go up high enough to lock this in. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come back, I'm gonna grab onto that elbow to maintain this bend. I'm gonna take my left hand, I'm gonna come around, and I'm gonna scoop, and I'm gonna pull up. Okay, turn real quick. So, when I'm scooping up, I'm not just pulling up, I'm kind of going in a circular motion, and that's gonna allow my forearm and my elbow to connect Create the position. You could go gable grip, you could go palm to palm. You could hold it with one hand to draw a weapon to strike, and then this will keep you beside them and be able to lock this in as well. Okay? So, a lot of the times in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, they call that the Americana. In Anastasio Kali, in our curriculum, we call that the inverted armbar because we're attacking it in the opposite direction. No matter what the name is, it's very important that when you look at these, you have an end goal in mind. You want to Personally, I'd like to be in a position where I can control them and de-escalate, but still flow it into something else if that fails. 
Or if I'm not looking to submit at all, then I want to be in a position where I can strike and either bringing them to the ground in the least dominant position, or if this was a kind of a more tactical engagement, uh, including weapons and environmental factors, then I want to be able to draw a weapon, draw my knife, draw a firearm, draw handcuffs, so on and so forth, to help me uh, have the, the dominant position. So just to give you kind of an idea of what I'm talking about, if I come in for this Khalifo and I end up getting this high position here, I lock, I can always flow to a separate position if the full armbar isn't enough. From the full armbar, I can also frame and I can go into a knee here. And this position allows all my takedowns, my full circle takedown, I can do it with my leg. I can turn the base here and I can kick this leg out like this and I can cause him to fall over. This is gonna help me get a full circle even better. More importantly, when I do this, I have options. So I'm not just looking for one submission and hoping that works. It, it's a, being this close is very uh, physical in the point where it's a lot of feeling as opposed to seeing, because there's a lot of this that I can't really see. But depending on how low his arm is or how high it is, depending on the tightness of his shoulder, the amount of rotation, it's going to tell me what I can do, what I can't do. And in, in hopes that I'm gonna choose the right decision where when I get to something, it's gonna be able to be capitalized, but if not, I can take that feeling that's coming after this in terms of resistance, and I can turn it into something else where I can go into a technique to solve the equation. Okay, so um, in regards to the Khalif flow, it's very important that you, again, you have follow-ups, you have options from the Khalif flow, because that alone is not going to be enough, uh, but is a very effective gateway to applying your other techniques, be it from Filipino martial arts or not. So that is uh, your video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you have any questions at all, make sure you comment below. You can also reach out to Anastasio Kali via the description box as well. Very quickly, our uh, union apparel shorts have finally been produced. I'm very excited for these. So if you guys are interested in grabbing yourself a pair, we have limited sizes available. They will be up on AnastasioKali.com as well. So. Grab your pair if you want to support the team. And until next time, catch you guys then.